Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a quick video on how to install Linux Mint on a 2012 MacBook Pro. So let's jump right into this. All right, so here we are on my desktop and I'm doing this in Linux, but it doesn't matter. This first part you can do in whatever operating system you're in. One thing I will say is that you'll need some way to connect your MacBook Pro to the internet because there's an issue that I'll get to later on that you uh, need to either use an ethernet a cable or tether through your phone or get your MacBook Pro on the internet some other way than Wi-Fi. So like I said, we'll get to that later. But for right now, what we wanna do is first thing, download uh, Etcher. So if you go out to the site and I'll have these links down below, just download Etcher for whatever operating system you're on. I'm on Linux now, so I uh, chose the Linux one, but they have it for Mac, Windows, whatever. This process is exactly the same, whatever operating system you're on. The next thing you wanna do is download Linux Mint. Again, this link is in the description, but you want to get whatever version you want. And there's three different versions of Mint. There's Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE. Now, Cinnamon is kind of the flagship, uh, but it's the heaviest. Uh, XFCE is a pretty basic desktop environment, basic from looks and aesthetics, but not necessarily functionality. And then uh, Mate is in the middle, but um, as far as resources, it goes Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE as far as heaviest to lightest. So remember these are older machines, so keep that in mind when you're choosing one and you could just download all three and try them as well. But what you're gonna do is just click on download and then you're gonna scroll down here and find a mirror for whatever um, country you're in, whatever is closest to you. I'm in the US, I just clicked this advanced ho uh, hosters one. It downloads the ISO, I've already done this. Um, but once that's done, all you need to do is take a, a USB drive and just stick it in your computer. Now, once that's in the computer, we're gonna go ahead and launch up Etcher. And we are gonna select our ISO. We're gonna click flash from file, go to where you downloaded that ISO and select whichever version of Linux Mint that you downloaded. So I'm just gonna select the Cinnamon one. And then you click here to select the thumb drive that you put in. It should automatically default to it, but if it doesn't, just select it there. And then you just hit flash and you'll have to put your password in, but it'll go through, it'll flash the ISO onto that thumb drive. And once it says it's complete, we're ready to go. And we can go on to the next step, actually installing this on the MacBook. So once that's all done, you wanna take it out of your computer, put it into your MacBook and start the MacBook Pro holding down the option key. That's gonna bring up a menu to let you select from and there should be an EFI with a little uh, yellow disc icon. That's your external one. That's the USB drive that you put in there. Select that and it should boot you into the Linux Mint installer. All right, so here we are on the Linux Mint desktop. This is the live USB and I moved my camera up to the top there so you could uh, see the bottom right hand corner because I wanna show you something. Remember I told you you need some other way to get your Mac on the internet uh, that the Wi-Fi wouldn't work? Well, this is the first part of it. So what happens here is it doesn't recognize the Wi-Fi drivers out of the box. So it shows the wired, it, uh, it finds the ethernet port, but it doesn't find the Wi-Fi card. Now, when we're in the live installer, we can fix this very easily, but when we try to do the same thing after we boot, and I'll show you later, um, that's where we have problems. So the way we're gonna fix this is we're gonna just open up the menu and go to uh, drivers, driver manager. Give it a second here. It's looking for any drivers we might need for hardware that's not included. And it should find our Broadcom proprietary driver. And there it is, uh, this BCMWL kernel source. We wanna go ahead and use that, apply the changes. Now this takes just a minute, so just uh, be patient. Okay, so now it's done. We can see it says one proprietary driver is in use. It just told us that there's net, uh, Wi-Fi networks available. Let's go ahead and close that, close that. And now when we come down here, we have our Wi-Fi networks that we can connect to. So let's go ahead and connect to my guest network here. And you can see that works just fine. And once we get this installed on the system and then do uh, take care of that Broadcom driver, it works just fine there. There's just a, a extra step we have to jump through. And again, I'll show you in a minute. So we're just gonna go in and select this install Linux Mint. And yours may run a little bit faster. I just realized when I was making this video that, that I put this on a US, 
USB 2.0 thumb drive. So <laughs> it's kind of driving me crazy. It's a little slow, but uh, just bear with me. So uh, we're just going to select our options. So select, you know, whatever uh, language you're using and then hit continue. And then we're going to select our keyboard layout. For me, it's just uh, English US. Um, you, I'll leave this up to you, but if you don't install the multimedia codecs, you may have problems playing certain things back. So I would recommend installing these if you don't want to, if you want to, you know, just, um, not use any of the, um, proprietary stuff, then that's totally fine. And if that's the case, you probably know how to work around it. So <laughs> just for now, for everybody else, go ahead and select that. Now to install this, we're going to go ahead and just uh, select erase disk and install Linux Mint to uh, wipe out the disk and install this as our only, only operating system. You can do a dual boot as well, but uh, that's beyond the scope of this, this video. I can do another video if you want to see that. Just let me know in the comment section. It's just telling you that uh, it's going to wipe out the disk. It tells you which drive it's going to wipe out. You do want to make sure that it says this SDA drive and going to hit continue. Now, if you're one of those people that took out their optical drive and put another, another hard drive in there, you may have to go through the more advanced setting and specify what drive you want it to install on. Go ahead and select your location here. Uh, put in your name. This is just creating your user account. So pick your username and password. Um, go ahead and leave. I would not recommend logging in automatically. You can check that if you want. Um, and uh, it's up to you if you want to encrypt the home folder. Uh, for me, for the way I use this machine, I don't really need it encrypted, so I'm gonna leave that up. And then it's just gonna go through the install. This is gonna take a little while. Uh, again, it's probably gonna take a little longer for mine because I'm on this USB 2.0 thumb drive here, but uh, just let it go and it'll come back when it's complete and I'll do the same. As soon as this is complete, I'll come back and we'll continue on with the installation. So here we are back, everything is finally done and we're gonna go ahead and hit the restart button. It's gonna restart our system. It's gonna tell us to take out the uh, thumb drive and hit enter. And then when we do, it's just gonna bring us to that login prompt. We're gonna log in with the username that we created in the previous step and then uh, we'll join up with the video again. So here we are, we're logged into our new Linux Mint installation and everything works out of the box except for the Wi-Fi. Now, when we first log into Linux Mint, we're greeted with this great um, welcome screen and we can hit let's go and then we can go into any of these options. I'll go more into this in a video that I'm doing about using Linux Mint on this computer. This is just the installation. But if we come down here, we can see that we have the same situ situation that we had on the live USB where the Wi-Fi is not recognized. So we can just on the uh, welcome screen here, we can go into driver manager, just like we did on the live one. And it says we're offline. Um, so we can either connect to the internet or we can use the uh, USB. Now I have the USB here. I'm going to put it in and what we should be able to do is put that in. It'll find the drivers that are on the USB and install them for us. But let me show you what actually happens. So let's close these down. We're going to go ahead and hit OK and it detects the installation media is in there. We're going to mount it put in our password. This is the same password that you logged in with. And you can see it looked on the USB drive and it found those same kernel source drivers that we had before. We're going to select that. And when we hit apply, it should pull it from the USB, but watch what happens. Put in our password again. So it says an error occurred, cannot download packages while offline. Even though they're on the USB and they should be pulling them from there, it's still trying to grab them online. So this is where we need something like an ethernet cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit, put this in. It's connecting to the wired network. And so now the connection, connection is established. We're on the wired network. I can hit okay and do this again. And you can see that not only did it connect to the Wi-Fi, but it also connected us to the same Wi-Fi network that we were on before. So I can pull out the ethernet cable now and we're still online, we're good to go. If we come in here, we can see we're on this Wi-Fi network and everything works just fine. Everything else works great. The, the camera, all the ports and everything, that's the only hiccup that I ran into installing Linux Mint on here. But after that's done, it's a pretty solid system.
If you want to see a video of where I talk more about the use of this and look at the three different distributions on this computer, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell because that's coming up in just a day or two here. And um, I'm also doing a series where I look at all the top 10 distributions on DistroWatch and how they run on this computer. So if you want to see that same thing, make sure you subscribe. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video.